What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, we're going to be talking about both silver and gold. Surprise, surprise. But we're also going to be talking about and breaking down the new executive order on crypto that was just signed. And if you're not much of a crypto person, doesn't matter. Neither am I. This is still important to know. This is still important to be informed about. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts. You can watch both of Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And tomorrow morning, I'll be posting a brand new vlog. This is one that you're not going to want to miss. And of course, last but not least, go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Friday, March 11th, 2022. The current spot price of silver, as I'm filming the video, is $25.77. It's down 11 cents or down 0.43%. Very mild red day for silver. Spot price of gold is $19.75.50. It's down $21.70 or down 1.09%. Nice little red day on gold as well. And the gold to silver ratio is in the 76 to 77 to 1 range. But of course, that's as I'm filming the video at like 10 o'clock in the morning, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be talking quite a bit about the silver, quite a bit about the gold. And as you can see on display, nice little selection. I like, I'm a big fan of this little setup that I've had on display this week. We got the Type 1, Type 2 Silver Eagle, got a Canadian Maple Leaf, we got a Kangaroo, we got the 25th and the 30th anniversary maple right there. We got some Creatures of the North, we got some miscellaneous coins, some miscellaneous bars, and some fractional gold right down there in the center. But before we can even get into the money, I think we need to first talk about the currency. More specifically, the digital currency, and more specifically, the executive order that was just signed. All right, so within the executive order, there are a couple of different parts that I think we need to be paying close attention to. The first part is talking about figuring out exactly which government agency will be responsible for regulating the crypto space. Now, the reason no agency has been assigned the task yet is because first, the government needs to figure out what crypto even is. Now, I don't know how many of you remember, but I put out two videos. One was late last year, and the other one, I believe, was just last month, talking about what we can likely expect from the order. And I had said in those videos that the government is probably going to try to reclassify crypto so that it can be taxed differently. And that's pretty much exactly what we're seeing right now. The government is revisiting the topic. Is crypto a commodity? Is it a security? What is it? And depending on what the answer ends up being, according to the government, a different agency will be stepping in. For example, if crypto is classified as a commodity, which it was back in 2015, then it'll be the Commodity Futures Trading Commission's job to oversee crypto, which it has been, but it's kind of been letting crypto just really do its own thing. But if crypto ends up getting reclassified as a security, then it'll be the Securities and Exchange Commission's job to step in with new regulations. This will give the SEC more power and more funding, which is exactly what it wants. At the moment, this whole executive order is kind of being advertised as a way to prevent Russia from using digital currencies for military funding. But remember, this executive order has been in the works since last year, long before the invasion. I'm talking like Early last year, this has been getting talked about. So what this really is about is, you guessed it, money, tax dollars. In fact, 
they make that pretty much crystal clear in the documents if you look at them by straight up letting us know that they want to increase revenue from crypto. We've been talking about this since last year. We've known this already. But what we're seeing now is that the different agencies are pretty much battling each other over this. The CFTC wants crypto to be considered a commodity so that they get funding from it. The SEC wants it to be considered a security so that they get funding from it. And those aren't the only agencies that want their piece of the pie, by the way. We also have the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, whose job is to essentially prevent money laundering, as well as the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, whose job is to oversee bank activity and make sure banks are not breaking the law. They're trying to establish more of a presence in the space as well. So in conclusion, this entire executive order pretty much just sums up what we already knew, which is that the government is completely confused and has no idea what to do. The order is really going to have these different agencies do more extensive research, put together their findings, and then they'll figure out what class they should put crypto in. But in addition to all of that, another part of the order looks like it will be requiring another agency, the envir or another two agencies rather, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Office of Science and Technology Policy to evaluate the environmental impact different cryptos have. This is to study how many resources are used and how much energy is wasted on the mining process of these cryptos. Which, by the way, I'm a little hesitant to call them digital currencies anymore because pretty soon they might not be considered a currency. But either way, they want to see how many resources are being used and how much energy is being wasted on the mining process, which will play a huge role in the future of these cryptos. All right, so before moving on away from the cryptos, Let's put the executive order to the side because I wanted to point something out, something very, very alarming. As I'm sure most people are aware by now, I'm personally not the biggest crypto guy. I don't have an issue with it. It's just not really my thing. Personal preference at the end of the day, just like silver and gold. Some people don't like the coins. It's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. I don't have an issue with it. It's just not really my thing. But I do find it pretty alarming that not only do we have a whole long list of government agencies trying to jump into the space, but it also kind of freaks me out what governments can do when they're finally involved. I mean, we just saw what happened in Canada when the truckers were protesting. Canada was able to label those protesters as a dangerous threat simply for the sake of blocking their ability to use crypto. The government literally seized their Bitcoin, which defeats the whole purpose of the two big buzzwords that always used to, at least, go along with crypto. Unregulated and decentralized. Now we're learning that governments can just take it away from you. Of course, you can keep it in cold storage, but... How do you get it in cold storage in the first place? You have to do that online. And speaking of doing things online, apparently Russia is planning to disconnect from the global internet and only be on domestic servers to prevent Russian citizens from seeing what everyone outside of Russia is saying. Apparently, they're supposed to be pulling the plug today. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, so I guess we'll see, but I bring this up because Hypothetically, let's just say that is what Russia does. Imagine what type of an impact that would have on Russian citizens, number one in general, but also the ones who are trying to just simply buy and sell cryptos, since that's what we're talking about right here. If you cut them off from accessing the ability to trade with the rest of the planet, that would be devastating for them. Now I know that's not why Russia apparently wants to disconnect from the global internet, but it would be a side effect. And if you think like, oh yeah, that's just Russia. Oh yeah, that's just Canada, blah, 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 blah. Well, 
let me give you a friendly reminder what good old Los Angeles did in 2020. Now, this had nothing to do with crypto, but it had something to do with pulling the plug on people. In 2020, when the whole big thing was social distance, stay away from everyone, wash your hands 55 times a day, and don't look at anybody, there were a group of kids, teenagers or, or, or young adults, 18, 19, whatever they were, rich celebrities throwing parties every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven days a week, partying all day, all night, rich, have nothing better to do. And their houses, or should I say their mansions, were just crowded, jam-packed with a bunch of people partying, drinking, having a great time in Los Angeles, California, during a time where the government wanted to make everyone stay as far away from each other as possible. They were issued warnings. They were issued threats. They kept on partying. So you want to know what Los Angeles did? They cut their power and their water just for the sake of getting these people to listen. They weren't allowed to throw parties. They weren't allowed to do what they wanted in their homes, which that's not the argument here. We're not going to go down the whole rabbit hole of, oh, it doesn't, social distancing, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the government having the ability to take away your internet. But point being is that we see what Russia may or may not be doing disconnecting from the global internet. We're seeing Canada using the internet to seize people's crypto. We've seen the United States take people's internet away just to get them to listen or cooperate. So if you think that the government is not willing to do whatever it takes by any means necessary to interfere or to intervene or to remove your ability to do something, you're out of your friggin' mind. So in conclusion, this is the digital Wild West right now. And that's all I really have to say about the digital currencies or the cryptos. But before we move on to what else I want to talk about in today's video, just want to give a friendly reminder that you can get $5 of a crypto of your choice between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, Sheep, and Cardano. If you join Weeble and refer one friend and that friend goes and enables crypto trading, you'll get $5 of a crypto of your choice. Weeble link in the description. And now I want to get into the silver and the gold, but I also wanted to give a quick little summary of how the stock market is behaving today. Because let's not forget what happened yesterday. The February 2022 inflation report was released and we had learned inflation continues to climb. Surprise, surprise. No one saw that coming. 7.9% according to the CPI report. Now yesterday, the stock market fell, continued falling as it's been doing all year. Today, on the other hand, kind of moving in an upward direction. Then again, I am filming this video at like 10 o'clock in the morning, so God only knows what the stock market's gonna do for the rest of the day, but so far, we have the S&P 500 up 0.64%. We have the Dow Jones up 0.96%, and we have the NASDAQ up 0.4%. Again, it's 10 o'clock in the morning as I'm filming this video. I don't know if halfway through the day, we're just going to nosedive. I don't know if halfway through the day, we'll still be inclining and just moving our way up and up and up into the close. To be honest, that wouldn't really surprise me all that much, being that it's Friday, the last trading day of the week. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we close pretty strong today, but during these times, during these inflationary times, these borderline recessionary times, and during these times of war and everything that we have going on in the world, who knows? Good news is bad news, and bad news is good news, according to the market. But hey, really quick, before we move on to the silver and the gold, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. They'll give you five free stocks just for doing so. If you refer one friend by March 15th, you only have a couple days left to do this, they will give you 10 free stocks for the referral. This is part of their advertising budget. Rather than wasting currency on billboards and TV commercials, they reward the users for helping them build their app. And of course, if you refer three friends before the end of the month, they will give you 
a spin on the Weeble Wheel, which guarantees you at least one free share of Apple, with the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even ten free shares of Apple. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. Sell them. Congratulations, now you have the currency to go get you some silver and gold if you want. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. So now moving away from all of that. Moving away from executive orders. Moving away from all of these different government agencies. Moving away from the crypto. Moving away from the stock market. Moving away from all of that. Let's now talk about the silver and the gold. So sitting here on screen, you can see nice little selection as we were going over before. Some miscellaneous coins down here at the bottom, some miscellaneous bars over to the sides, some coins up there at the top, the creatures of the north right there. I actually have a backup channel video coming out tonight, which kind of talks about the creatures of the north and what the, the next one might be, the third one, what I, what I think it might end up being. We have some special maples over there, a 25th and a 30th anniversary maple, which... I'm going to take this 25th out for a second because I want to show something off. This 25th anniversary Canadian maple leaf right here, number one, that's just beautiful. The maple leaf in general is just a beautiful coin, but I don't know, something about how they added that 25 and also the 30, by the way, and I guess not too far off into the future, the 35th, but either way. I just think this is just like an incredible looking coin. They did a really good job on this. Canada just has a knack for designing different coins. But the reason I wanted to point this one out is because the 25th anniversary maple leaf was issued in 2013, which was five years before the mint, the Royal Canadian Mint, changed up their minting process and procedure, which means back then in 2013, Maple Leafs, doesn't matter if it was a 25th anniversary or just a normal Maple Leaf, kind of like that one over there. That was before they improved the minting process, which means back then, milk spots were pretty much inevitable. Horrible milk spotting reputation before they changed things up in 2018. So in 2013, even these beautiful coins we're pretty much guaranteed to have milk spots. And I don't know if you can tell, but down there in the, kind of the, the bottom left, I don't know if you're able to tell, the corner of the two right here, you may or may not be able to see. That's probably the most noticeable milk spot on this coin. I'll try to angle it around a little bit. Maybe you can tell. I don't know if the camera is really gonna do it justice, but either way, you can actually flip it over and you can really tell that it has milk spots. I don't know if the glare is throwing things off. There we go. You can tell. Crazy amount of milk spotting on this coin right here. Now, what's funny about this particular coin is that I didn't specifically order this. I got this online. What's funny about this particular maple leaf is back then, this was 2017, 2018 probably, I would get a lot of silver from the local coin shop, but from time to time when I had noticed that there was a sale or a deal, or if the spot price was just simply down, because that's a sale in and of itself, what I would do is I would go to some of these websites and I would order cull eagles and cull maples, aka damaged, scratched up, tarnished, milk spotted coins, because guess what? At the end of the day, what are they? They're still coins. A maple leaf is a maple leaf with or without the milk spots. A silver eagle is a silver eagle with or without tarnish. It doesn't matter to me. It never matter mattered to me. I was stacking for weight and I'm still stacking for weight. So what difference does it make if the coin is in perfect condition or slightly less perfect condition? So I ended up ordering myself a nice stack of cull Canadian maple leaves. So I knew that they were going to arrive with scratches. I knew that they were going to arrive tarnished. I knew that they were going to arrive maybe discolored a little bit. In fact, I have, I just noticed this right now, I have a whole tube of cull maple leaves right here. See, I even have it labeled. These are all the culls. 
and you can tell just from the side. I, I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell, but some of them in there are darker than others. Darker over here, darker over here. Some of them are just heavily discolored. That's what cull maples were. Or that's what cull ma maples still are, actually. But I would order those because it would knock off a little bit of the premium, and it would still be the same exact coin, just in not perfect condition. So I knew that they were going to arrive with milk spots. And I was going through them when they finally arrived. I opened up a box of cull maples, and I was going through them, and most of them were just maples. And surprise, surprise, one of them was this maple right here. It ended up being a 25th anniversary Canadian silver maple leaf just purely by coincidence. It blew my mind. It, it, it surprised me. I was like, wow, I did not specifically order that. That's awesome. What are the odds of ordering a cull maple leaf and ending up with a 25th anniversary cull maple leaf? So anyway, that's just the story behind that. In addition to that, we also have the 30th anniversary maple right over there as well. And we have some fractional gold sitting there. We have a 10th ounce Krugerrand Philharmonic Eagle Maple Britannia and a, tenth, uh, a quarter ounce Philharmonic. And over here to the side, a 10th ounce Kookaburra, just in a weird shaped capsule. So it never really seems to fit. And of course, we also have some 90% junk Washington quarters. And I also have a couple of tubes of Silver Eagles, some uncirculated, some culls. I have some airtight tubes full of other coins and rounds and whatnot as well. Those are off to the side. I'm not even going to get into those. But I wanted to talk about the silver and the gold today for a couple of different reasons. We're seeing today both silver and gold down a little bit. It's a red day for the precious metals so far. As I said before, God only knows what the stock market's going to do, which means God only knows what the spot price of silver and gold are going to do. So I guess we're going to see. But I think there's probably a good chance that we're going to close in the red today uh, for, for the silver and gold, that is, which I personally have no problem with because I know a lot of people have been looking forward to hitting up their local coin shop. And after a very green week, it's nice to see a little bit of red. Then again, I believe silver was only down 11 cents. And I've explained in previous videos, I like to see momentum. I like to see big jumps in an upward direction for silver and also for gold. I also like to see big drops in a downward direction when it comes to silver and gold. I just like to see that momentum. To be honest with you, looking at silver and seeing that today it's down 11 cents, I don't know if you're on the same page as me, but that's as good as not being down at all. 11 cents doesn't make the slightest bit of a difference, especially for those of us who are only picking up maybe 5 to 10, maybe 20 troy ounces of silver at a time. 11 cents per troy ounce to me is nothing. That doesn't make a bit of a difference. So I'm not looking at spot price today and saying to myself, oh, wow, buy the dip. I'll stack silver and gold either way with or without a dip, but I don't really consider that to be a dip. When silver goes up into the $26 range and then it falls down by 11 cents or whatever, to me, that's not a dip. To me, that's not really any movement at all. And that's why I don't really like to talk about when silver moves up or down just a couple of cents. I'll talk about the spot price of silver when it moves up or down from $1 mark to another dollar mark. That's a little bit more interesting to talk about, but I'm going to be honest. It's incredibly boring to talk about silver moving up 14 cents or down 11 cents, which is why I don't do that. Again, I'll stack silver and gold, specifically, or more specifically silver, with or without a dip. It doesn't matter to me all that much what spot price is doing. It's fun to talk about. It's interesting to talk about when we see a lot of momentum. But when we're not seeing any momentum, and there's not a whole lot to talk about, I'll still stack it anyway. Because I consider it to be kind of like my responsibility at this point. I consider it to be almost like an obligation to myself. Financial preparation. I'm just taking care of my finances. I'm, I do a lot of different things to take care of my finances. And by stacking silver and gold, that's just one part of it. That's my form of playing financial defense, even though right now, in my opinion, for me personally, for you, it might be different. For me personally, it makes far more sense to be playing financial offense right now. Silver and gold, that's financial defense. Even though I'm playing more offense than defense, it doesn't mean that I'm 
neglecting playing defense. No, I'm still playing defense. I'm just playing more offense than defense at this time. And not only that, I think during these times, like I said before, during these inflationary times, in January, we had learned that the December inflation had gone up to 7%. In February, we learned that January's inflation had gone up to 7.5%. And now in March, just yesterday, we learned that February inflation had gone up to 7.9%. Inflation's not slowing down. Inflation is real. Inflation is continuing. And even though I'm optimistic about inflation long term, I am not optimistic about inflation short term. I'm not optimistic about inflation over the next couple of months or really even the rest of the year, to be honest with you. I think it's going to take quite a bit of time. We have the Federal Reserve's meeting coming up just next week. I think it's only like four or five days away at this point. And the taper is going to officially come to an end and rates are officially going to start going up. But I don't think right off the bat we're going to notice anything happen at all. I don't think that it's going to cause inflation to simmer down in any way, shape, or form just yet. I don't think the stock market is even going to have a reaction to it right off the bat. I think it's going to take several months, and I think it's going to take a whole series of rate hikes before we notice any difference at all. That's just what I'm personally expecting. And when I talk about things like this, I always like to reference Chael Sonnen because he always says, I reserve the right to change my opinion if confronted with new information. And based on the information that I'm going off of right now, these are just the conclusions that I've come to. I might have a different conclusion at some point in the future. I might change my opinion at some point in the future if confronted with new information, but I'm going off of the current information. So that's my current opinion and that's my current conclusion. But I'm very curious, everybody watching right now, if you can head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to the earlier discussion, talking about the cryptocurrency executive order that was just signed, I believe just signed yesterday. Do you believe that that's going to have a major impact on the crypto space or all of the markets as a whole? Do you think that that's going to do some damage? Do you think that maybe it could be a good thing? Do you think it's probably going to be a bad thing? And then, of course, when it comes to all of the different agencies trying to get their piece of the pie, when it comes to the digital currency space or, or reclassifying it as something else, a commodity, is it a security? What do you think the end result is going to be and how do you think the markets are going to react to that? And then, of course, beyond that, when it comes to the silver and the gold, when it comes to playing financial offense versus financial defense, which makes more sense to you at this time? What stage of the game are you in right now? Are you playing more offense than defense? Are you playing more defense than offense? I don't believe you can go 50-50. I don't think that's possible. But head on down to the comments and let me know. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for weekly videos, go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, and a bunch of different designs. We have the limited edition, luck has nothing to do with it, t-shirt and hoodie, only available until St. Patrick's Day. Get one while you can, only a couple of days left. And a portion of the proceeds are going to St. Baldrick's Foundation, which is helping children with cancer. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month. Live streams multiple times a week. Deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And tomorrow morning, I'll be posting a brand new adventure vlog. And there are a ton of other perks as well. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. VIP club link in the description. And of course, last but certainly not least, go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. They'll give you five free stocks just for doing so. 
Normally it's two, they bumped it up to five just for the next couple of days, so capitalize on that while you can. And if you refer just one friend by March 15th, you only have a couple of days left, they will give you 10 free stocks for the referral. This ends in just a couple of days. Tell one person you know. And if you refer three friends by the end of the month, you got a couple of weeks left to do this one, they will give you a spin on the Weeble Wheel, which guarantees you at least one free share of Apple with the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 free shares of Apple. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Again, if you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. Sell them. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver and gold if you want. And of course, friendly reminder, for every friend that you refer that goes and enables crypto trading, Weeble will give you $5 of a crypto of your choice between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, Sheeb, and Cardano. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to the new executive order, it's not really a new executive order, but it's newer now because it was just signed and now it's going into action. What do you think the end result is going to be? What do you think the aftermath is going to look like? Do you think that crypto will remain considered a commodity? Do you think it will be changed to a security and then the SEC is going to get involved? How big or small of an impact do you think that that's going to have on the crypto space and the other markets as well? And then, of course, when it comes to the silver and the gold, what is your strategy at this time? Are you focusing more of your attention on playing financial defense with the precious metals? Or are you a little bit more focused on playing financial offense with different types of investments? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.